Senator Hastings, Representative Mass, and distinguished members of the Joint Standing Committee on Judiciary. My name is uh, Ellie Hesplin. I'm from District 105, which includes New Gloucester, Durham, and part of Lisbon. And I'm before you today to present LB 924, an act to educate women on medical risks associated with abortion. Yeah. Often, especially as a new legislator, we are reminded to look carefully at the bills before us and not to rely on the title of the bill to explain its entire intent. <clears throat> this is definitely the case for LB 924, as this bill is so much more than just informing women of risks associated with abortion. The purpose of this bill is to ensure that women are given as much information as possible in making a truly informed decision about abortion. This committee has dealt with these women's health issues in the past and no doubt will continue to happen in the future. People are passionate about this issue on both sides. My intent is to present this bill and go over its wording. The testimonies following will give you the reasons why this bill is important and necessary for the protection of women. Now, I have included in my testimony that you all should have a copy of the current law, the current statute language for the informed consent that Maine has right now. I will not read that um, to you, but it is right there. Uh, LD 924 strengthens this informed consent law that's already on the books. It would require that an abortion provider give the following information to the patient at least 24 hours before the abortion procedure is performed. And most patients, unless in a dire emergency situation, have a standard practice of wait time after a diagnosis before treatment. I just think of when I go to the doctor and have a diagnosis, oftentimes I'm not treated right on the spot, but I make a follow-up appointment to have that treatment. So that, that's kind of how I view this. The, the choice to have an abortion or keep pregnancy is a huge decision that will stay with that person the rest of their life. And I feel that to provide an opportunity for someone to reflect on this decision for a minimum of 24 hours would be very beneficial in the long term to women faced with this difficult choice. Now, the following um, is, is the wording in the bill itself. The, one of the first things I have was the name of the physician who was to perform the abortion uh, should be given to the patient before the abortion. In my opinion, I think that every patient should know at minimum the name of the doctor performing the procedure that they're going to undergo. A description of the procedure to be used. Uh, every woman undergoing this procedure should be told what's going to be done to her body. And I know there is a difference in procedures used depending on the uh, term of the fees itself as well. So, so that, to, to know the distinction between those would be important to her. The risks of the abortion procedure and the risks of childbirth. Understanding anyone who has an abortion procedure or carries a pregnancy to term does does take on certain risks. Um, there are risks associated with both, with both um, caring to term and having an abortion. And a woman should be informed of all her risks and make, before making a decision. For me, this reminds me of when I go to the pharmacy to get my medication. On the paper that comes with it are listed all the possible risks and side effects that have ever occurred to anyone using that medicine. I never asked for this information. But it is provided for me, which is helpful because if I ever have a reaction, I would have the information at hand. This bill would also require that scientifically accurate information about the fetus be given to the patient. I think it's important that a woman know the exact development of the fetus to make a decision regarding abortion. And why would we want to keep this from anyone? Um, I also believe that the woman should be provided with information on the availability of medical benefits. Understanding that many women may see financial hardship as a reason to have an abortion, I feel it is necessary to show them that the state has programs in place to give temporary assistance in these types of situations. It is my position that in this type of a decision, a temporary tough financial situation should not be the primary reason for having an abortion, and to show a woman that she can have some financial support may be helpful to her. And I also, in the bill, also suggest that information be provided to her on the father's liability for support. It is vital for women to understand that if they decide to continue with the pregnancy that the father is liable for support if she wishes to pursue support from that person. So this information according to this proposal would be given both orally and in written form. And this is helpful because as with any shocking diagnosis, a patient may not be able to quickly process information given orally. 
but can take the written information home to consider. Under the current informed consent law in Maine, this information is available to the woman, but only if she asks for it. The final portion of LD 924 includes guidelines for a brochure to be put together by the Department of Health and Human Services. This brochure can be the piece of written information that an abortion provider gives to the patient. Uh, brochures have been used in other states, and hopefully, I'm not sure if you got them today, I gave you samples of some of the brochures that other states use. Um, if you didn't get them today, perhaps you can make sure you have them for the work session. Just so that you can get an idea of what other states have done <clears throat> to have that information printed. In conclusion, LD 924 is about empowering Maine women with the information to make a very well thought out decision regarding a procedure done to their own body. In this information age that we live in, a woman should have as much information as possible before her to make a decision that will affect her for the rest of her life. And I did um, put in, uh, when we when I drafted the bill, I, I didn't put in a medical emergency clause. I just assumed that there must be some provision in law for that. I did not have one. So I do have a bill. The bill before you has that exception in there. Um, it should be in big letters and, and highlighted that, um, except for the case of the medical emergency. So, and that is my testimony. Thank you, Representative. So, th this amendment attached to your testimony is the bill language that you'd like to commit to. Yes. 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 And I don't believe there's anybody, I don't find any brochures in my. Uh, Testimonies, I think it would be very helpful if you. Yes, yeah, my uh, aim is going to bring up this a rather large stack, and I know you're overwhelmed with paper right now, but um, perhaps we'll be able to find them. Sure How much are you going to get? Careful <laughs> <laughs> what you ask for. Do any questions for Representative Esquire? Senator Brown. Uh, Senator Brown, you're going to have to speak. One of the categories is that. Scientifically accurate information on the fetus be required. Who would determine what's scientifically accurate and how detailed that information should be? Okay, it's just scientifically accurate information. It doesn't spell out how, in what form, that information will be given to the patient. Um, my understanding is that in a lot of abortion procedures, they do perform an ultrasound because they need to date the fetus, and so. I don't think there's much discrepancy in the scientific accuracy of an ultrasound. So that would be, you know, part, part of the scientific. So what, so what we mean is scientific accurate information about the particular fetus. Yes. Not and about. For that woman that's in that pain, for that patient. Yes. And would you... <laughs> So the question is, how far would they have to go to provide it? If an ultrasound would not be done. Okay. I'm mean, just trying to understand how detailed do we have to go? I mean, do you have to know the, the height, the weight, the way? I'm not sure what. Oh, that, that's really not spelled out here. It's, it's I think the, the, the intent is just if a woman has a general idea, I'm, I think I'm six weeks pregnant. You know, I think that they should have a general idea of what six weeks pregnant means. And, yeah. and we certainly, through human anatomy and biology, know how how big that fetus is or what that fetus looks like at six weeks. So that would be the information. Representative, we've now been supplied with about uh, four different separate doctors. Are these the types yes. of structure? Those, those are the brochures. Now, many states handle the brochure as, a, as an online brochure. So whether they do that in terms of making sure the person looks at it online or the availability for the clinic to print the information off, it's all online. That's how we were able to get those. Um, and then those states do require that that information be handed out to the patient. Yes, Representative. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, <laughs> Representative Asperling, um, how many other states have a law like this? Do you, are you aware of other states that 
I believe 24 other states have a waiting period, and 24 other states require the information to be handed to the patient. That sounds about right. Those are the ones that were more available to us. And then your proposed bill, the basically the department will be given the discretion. Department yes. Department of Human Services is given yes. the discretion to develop the, the And the purpose for that was um, I had heard um, people say that perhaps we would be giving them um, ad, advocating one position or another. And I, I don't want that. I just want the facts. And if, if the Department of Health and Human Services puts a brochure together, I would feel pretty comfortable that only the facts would be presented and there would be no type of advocacy in one way or another. Senator Brown, would you support a 24 hour waiting period for all medical procedures? For all uh, significant medical procedures? No, I, I think this is on a whole other level, seeing the, seeing the um, life effect from this type of a decision. So, no, I don't think you can put all medical procedures in the same category. For all I just think that this is a, an important decision and oftentimes a decision that you, you are able to wait 24 hours to have it done. And that's, I think the time is important to get to a woman to make that choice. Thank you, Representative. Thank you very much.